is God. He himself has made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who declarest thy glory and showest forth thy handiwork in the heavens and in the earth, deliver us, we beseech thee, in our several occupations from the service of self alone that we may do the work which thou givest us to do in truth and beauty and for the common good for the sake of him who came among us as one that serveth thy son Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen amen, amen. a reading from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. <coughs> now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and come to the mountain of God, even to Horeb, to and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Four. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Here am I. <coughs> Bless, you. Bless, you. Bless, you. Bless you. Five. And he said, Draw not near Peter. 
put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Lord of your father, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. And Moses, his face, and Moses hid his face, and hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Seven. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Now I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a, la unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, Perizzites and the Havites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come down therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. 12. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. The reading of the Lord. Yeah, thanks be to God. Uh, the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. So, uh, a reading from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 through 29. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 through 29. For ye not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burnt with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that had entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure endure that which was commended and if so and if so much as a beast touch the mountain it shall be stoned or touched through with a dart and and so terrible was the sight that Moses said I exceedingly fear the quake but ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape if they escaped not who refused him that quake on earth, much more shall not we escape. If we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had promised, saying, Yet once more I shall not the earth only 
but also heaven. And this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaking, as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. 28. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. 29. For our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke chapter 10 verses 17 through 24. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, Behold, Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on spent and and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this, re in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All these are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father and who the Father is, but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said, and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. 24. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. The Gospel of the Lord. The Thank Holy you. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Saint, according to Saint Luke, according to you, Lord Christ. So, you know, what we see here, and we look at the Old Testament there, and we see that uh, you know the burning bush was was that thing which was on fire but not consumed. And uh, I know that years ago I did an extraordinary study on this, and and uh, to make it short there, that uh, uh, one of the things that was pretty much implied there is that it's like can be like a foreshadowing of of, uh, of the Mother Mary, you know, that, that she's bringing forth Christ, the Word of God, you know, as, as a God-bearer, you know, and, uh, and so, like, you know, she's on, I mean, it's like, it's like um, uh, being on fire but not being consumed is like giving up all that a person has and offering all of themselves to God and uh, not being consumed because God continuously sustains them. So uh, a lot of times that's kind of how it is, you know, like people, you know, you don't know how they survive uh, and people that 
really do the Lord's work and they offer themselves to God fully and then God continuously sustains them and so he continuously fills as they continuously pour out and uh, we see that the burning bush it was on fire but it wasn't consumed and that was kind of the message the, the uh, understanding that I kind of got out of it many years ago and um, so I, I kind of saw that as like that we, we all need to be burning bushes in a sense that we all need to be on fire for the Lord you know and pouring out all of our contents to God and um, you know be on fire but not be consumed because God continuously fills us but there's a lot of evil that can take place if people misunderstand that and, and abuse it so that's where you know it's uh, easy to to uh, misunderstand and abuse and and pervert teachings even and that's what we don't want to see happen you know we don't want to see people just give their all to to corruption and and uh, you know things that really don't matter and that's very sad but it's the case that it's the Lord that spoke through the burning bush and it's through you know Mary the Holy Mother of God that God in the flesh was born you know who's the Word of God so you know there's a lot of parallelism there between the burning bush and and, uh, and mary you know the, the mother of god and uh, so one of the things to note though is that like scripture says that to virgins uh, you know the apostle gives no command and uh, you know mary mother of christ uh, that she was a virgin when she, you know, conceived and bore Christ. And so when we look at that and we think about that in terms of the Holy Mountain and, and how the Israelites were not allowed at the mountain and things like that, you know, it, it's, it's understandable to think that, uh, that she was able to have a lot of the things that the common Israelites couldn't specifically Christ born from her very flesh you know she was able to have that see other people that were like Hebrews uh, other people that were Jews I should say Jews in the time of Christ they uh, you know they did not have uh, you know Christ they really didn't and you know they they would be able to talk to Christ but they obviously were just totally off you know and uh, but with Mary the Holy Mother of God you know because Jesus is God in the flesh Mary she um, you know from her Christ was born so there's a very strong connection with more so than any other human on earth between her and Christ and, uh, and that's what makes it really special we look at that in Mother's Day and, and you know it's a very special thing uh, but we look at the New Testament and how today we have such greater uh, promises uh, we also you know are able to go to Christ and uh, uh, partake of his flesh and his blood without having you know the fear of like uh, you know the the Ten Commandments and and the gloom and doom there of Mount Sinai and and you know the commandments being broken and the whole you know issue with the rebellion and all that you know we don't have to have all that fear and 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 uh, sort of like hostility and stuff that that was in that history over over our history you know that we um, that things are a lot different you know the 
that because Christ died on the cross for us and then rose from the dead that we partake of those graces, you know, those, those, um, you know, uh, basically that unmerited favor because we partake of that because of what Christ did and he purchased us with his blood that because we're able to do that and, uh, and have that, you know, his blood speaks such a better message than that of the blood of bulls and things like that, where, where uh, the old system was, was not, uh, was, was the old sacrificial system was, was a very sad thing. So compared to Christ and his blood shed for us and us partaking that, and uh, and we, we have something so much better. And it really is the case, like in the gospel reading there, that not everybody's been revealed this. I mean, some people, they might go to like a church building or something for 20 or 30 years, and they might really not believe in Christ, unfortunately. They might just go there and it just be like, going there because maybe their family went there or whatever and you know if you ask them you know do you believe they might just tell you that they're just unsure you know and that they don't really you know believe and stuff uh, or they might not really know and uh, you know I'm not just giving examples or picking on people but what I'm saying here is that is that it really is the case that you know not everybody's been revealed this like we could preach and and we could have all sorts of time spent on all this and revealing everything but in the end you know people simply may not believe and um, you know and, and I had a philosophy professor in school many years ago and he was an atheist, and um, and there was a, a teacher's aide there, or not teacher's aide, but like, I'll just say teacher's assistant. It was like a graduate student. He was a graduate student, teacher assistant for another class. And he said, you know what, he said, with atheists, there's different kinds of atheists. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, there's a Baptist atheist, there's a Catholic atheist, you know, there's, there's your, your Protestant atheist, this and that, and I'm like, what do you mean? He said, well, you see, it's not just that they're atheist, but they're atheist against whatever uh, denomination they came out of. And I thought, that's really strange. And, but then I looked and I realized he's right. You know, that this philosophy professor that, you know, he was teaching philosophy philosophy of religion, believe it or not, and he was atheist, and the whole time he would write Bible verses on the board and then, you know, make a whole case for why it's wrong, you know, and he would do that, like, almost every day and, and be, like, acting like the Bible is just totally wrong, and, and, and he was claiming it wasn't his job to show the truth. In his, his mind, that was the truth, what he was proclaiming. And that, you know, but but he was just doing this because it was like some kind of like special favors for society or something. I don't know. That's what it seemed like. And uh, that he was kind of making the case for him. And, and uh, you know, and, and he, he said, one of the things he said years ago is he said, you see, you know, I think the soul came about because you know, people were in battle or whatever, you know, and, and, uh, and, you know, people would die and this and that, and they would have this, and so he had this whole strange thing he, he said about the soul, and, and, but he's like, but he's like, but then when people would be in battle and, and they would die and, 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 you know, somebody's head would get cut open, you know, that they wouldn't see a soul come out, and, and he's like, you know, therefore it doesn't exist kind of thing, you know? And, and so, like, what I said is I said, well, you see, you know, 
if you if you're starting with like the principle of of that the only thing that exists is what we can see with our five senses, you know, and and I said that's kind of like starting with like and I said those are the axioms. I said which is the basic assumptions that the only thing that exists is what you see with the five senses, and I said that's kind of like uh, starting with the you know axioms of mathematics you know which are very uh, basic and, and only pertain to mathematics you're never going to have psychology pop out of that you know because it's different assumptions that build psychology so what I was saying is that you know you get what you started with you know you started with the assumptions that everything is you know based on the five senses and what you've gotten is readings from those five senses and then you come to conclusions based upon that which only pertain to those things that relate to the five senses so it'd be the same way with math you know you start with the axioms of math you do some things in math you're only going to have things that pertain to math you know it's only going to be math you know it, but you never start with math and then suddenly psychology pops out unless you change your assumptions along the way you know you change things along the way and and that's what I was basically saying and and then he's like well if, if God came to my door and knocked on my door, he's like, I would shut it in his face or whatever, you know? And so I came up later on with the idea, well, you know, if God created you in the door, like, you could never shut the door on God unless he let you. Because, you know, both you and the door, I mean, ultimately, you know, it's God's creation. You know, certainly man created the door, but, you know, it was God that created the whole universe and everything in it. So, but all this to say, all this to say um, that really, like, what we have now is so much better than what we had in the past, like with Moses and the Ten Commandments, because... You know, we, we have Christ, who is the mediator of a greater covenant. You know, we don't sacrifice animals and get atonement that way. You know, we partake of Christ and his flesh and his blood. And when that happens, we become living members in the body of Christ. So we're able to partake of, of who he is and be part of him. And, and that, that makes a huge difference. And see, ultimately, the way that we do that, though, is, you know, we rid ourselves from our sins, you know, and, and we confess our sins. We have our sins absolved of us. Then we receive Christ sin-free, and then we're able to be in Him without any sin. But we all know how the world is, you know, we know how that, you know, everybody, I mean, there gets in sin, you know, a sin of all kinds, that uh, the world's just full of sin. And so it's one of those things where, where, you know, it's like we can't really, you know, fully do that in any particular time, because uh, if we did, it's like we'd be walking Christ around, you know. We would be there would be no difference between us and Christ, and we'd be walking around as, as Christ, you know, all of us would be that partake of the Lord's Supper. And it wouldn't wouldn't end, you know. It would just be like that all the time. You know, just just fully us and Christ united and and it would just be like like just incredible, you know, united in every way practically. But see, just with that example, that philosophy, philosophy professor and how he was writing on the board all these verses and then saying, you know, that 
that the Bible's wrong because of this, 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 and this, and this, you know, and and making all these cases, all these cases against religion, and, and just going on and on, and and uh, he went on and on, and uh, but just like that philosophy professor, he may not realize that, you know, like he may not fully realize just how wrong he is, you know, and, uh, and, and people, they often don't realize just how wrong they are, you know, and, um, and so that's where sometimes it can take a miracle, just like with Saul on the road to Damascus there, you know, he was out to get Christians and, and bring them in on charges and this and that, you know, and, and then all of a sudden he became blind, and then there was that light in the sky, and this and that, and and, um, and he it was only when he repented that he was able to gain his sight again. You know, it was like something like scales fought, fell from his eyes, and he was able to see again. And then he became Saint Paul, the Apostle of Christ. And so, I mean, it really is the case that sometimes it takes a transformation like that people like that and there could be areas in our own lives that are like that that it takes like this huge miracle for us to be the right way and to see the right way and to, to you know to be changed and transformed to be right you know and, and uh, but we still hope for you know when we partake of the Lord's Supper we hope for um, you know uh, like a time when we are fully united with Christ with with no sin whatsoever that we're just completely free of sin that Christ and us are fully united that the ways of the past are just completely forgotten about that we don't you know we don't it's not even an issue at all you know it's just totally gone the whole past and that's that's what we hope for someday you know and, and that's when everything comes to fulfillment it's like the consummation of all things as it were you know everything comes to the end of time and fulfillment it's like the conclusion of the story the conclusion of the story so uh, that's what uh, we can look forward to just like uh, scripture says uh, you know he says I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning of the end he says, uh, um, you know, if, if that Christ has started a good work in you, you know, he will work it until fulfillment, basically, until, you know, it, it, it's done. You know, it, um, you know it, when he begins a good work, he works it to conclusion. He's the author and the finisher of our faith, you know, so he's... He's both the originator and the concluder, you know, the ender of it. And so um, as we look forward to everything being, being full and, and perfect um, in, when it's all, when it's all um, made perfect. So anyway, we believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory uh, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy, catholic church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern, govern and hold authority of the nations of the world. That they may be justice and peace on earth. Have compassion of those who suffer from any grief or trouble and they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the part of eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who bring their joy. May we also come to share, to share your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and for those of others. Father God, you know, we pray that uh, uh, I would be able to gain employment uh, after school ends, short, very shortly after school ends for this school year. Uh, currently, you know, I'm, I'm working as a substitute teacher and, uh, you know, I need to have very good employment after the school year ends. And I pray as well that uh, others too, there's, uh, there are people that uh, I've known through, uh, through the internet for maybe over 10 years or more that uh, have wanted to come to the United States and, and uh, you know, people that I've corresponded with that are very involved in the faith, in their faith. And it's, uh, I mean, that they believe really similar to what we believe a lot of times, but they may not believe exactly what we believe. So that's where I'd like to, you know, ask that all those people you know, would be greatly blessed. Uh, I know that uh, I, Paul, Cervantes Paul Bada is, is one that uh, whatever. Um, I know that he would like to, I'm sure, you know, believe exactly as we do, uh, hopefully, but um, that you would grant him the opportunity to, to really develop and grow and uh, have ministry there in India and uh, pray as well for, uh, uh, you know, the, the friend I think of that uh, is uh, Anglican in Pakistan can't think of his name right now that uh, has wanted to come to the United States for some some time that uh, you would give him the opportunity that uh, cause him to develop and grow and uh, you know I pray as well for for uh, those that pray as well for many other people as well. Um, pray, Father God, Pray for many other people as well, and I pray that uh, we will grow and develop as a church. You know, I know that with the facilities that uh, we currently have here, that they're really not the best. I mean, for having a, a, a worship service, you know, I know that you know things aren't really the best here, but I pray that at some point. You know, we'll have better things uh, for worship and that it'll be a better place for worship. I pray for my mother, for her health concerns, 
you know, I pray that uh, uh, both mental and physical, that you would heal her and uh, provide for her, of uh, her needs, even financial needs. You know, I pray that uh, uh, many good things would happen. You know, I, I certainly hope, and it's been my hope, uh, with my Master Divinity, that uh, uh, we would have you know, regular uh, services uh, with many people in a regular building that has regular services with many people. Uh, and that that would be a very good thing, uh, that it would be very God-blessed and, and uh, a joyous, joyous thing. Uh, but so far, you know, it hasn't come to pass, but it doesn't mean it won't. And I pray that it does come to pass. I pray that uh, our futures, you know, everybody that's watching here, you know, our futures would be greater than what we could even imagine. We really do. And, uh, you know, and, and it, it really is the case that, you know, I substitute teach in public schools and you know, I see so many students, so many students, that they have such bad behavior that it's clear to me that their futures may not be the best. And that's where you know, I hope that that bad behavior stops at the school and when they get out of there, that it doesn't continue on. And it's the same way here, you know, if we have behaviors that prevent us from really having the graces of God, you know, I pray that we would we would not have those, you know, that we would we would just do whatever needs to be done, um, you know, whatever it is, so that we can fully have the graces of God and that you deliver us from all evil, Father God. Um, pray all this, so I'm saying. Pray for mothers and children. Today's Mother's Day. Yeah, pray for mothers and children. This is Mother's Day. Uh, I'll tell you what, pray that, um, you know, children would be delivered from all evil. Mm -hmm. Same way with mothers if, if they have difficulty with that. I'll tell you what, it is the case that uh, it, in this country, it used to be worse, but it can be very difficult to have children, I'm sure. And um, so that's where I pray that uh, that children of, of all types uh, that are born will have a better life potentially than the generation before them. You know that it just keeps getting better and not worse, and uh, that we're able to continuously have better and better things as a as a as a, a race, you know, as a human race. And, uh, and so, <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you declare your uh, glory and show us forth your handiwork in the heavens and in the earth. Deliver us in our various occupations from the service of self alone, that we may do the work you give us to do in truth and beauty and for the common good. For the sake of him who came among us as one who serves, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and, give, and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. For our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, for your sins are resolved, you. Amen. The 
peace of the Lord be always with you. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to Lord our God to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we, pr we praise you, join our voice with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing the sin to him to reclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in infinite love, you have made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share, heaven, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He uh, stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over his suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave him thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for to be. <coughs> Therefore, proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the more of our redemption, O Father, and sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also, we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. The last day bring us with all your saints in the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, and by him and with him in the union of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, O my Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse my iniquities. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. How you Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep your eyes in life. We have the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, Amen. Body of Christ. Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, keep your eyes in life. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, Amen. Body of Christ. Blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep your eyes in life. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, Amen. Blood of Christ. Blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep your eyes in life. May the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the Amen, Blood of Christ. Blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep us life. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the Amen, Blood of Christ. Let us continue by singing a hymn. We're going to sing find it here. Of the Father's love begotten. Of the Father's love begotten. Ere the worlds began to be, He is Alpha and Omega, He the source, the ending, He of the things that are, that have been, and that future year shall see, evermore and evermore. Oh, that birth forever blessed, when a virgin blessed with grace by the Holy Ghost conceiving bore the Savior of our race and the babe the world's Redeemer first revealed his sacred face evermore and evermore let the heights of heaven adore him Angel hosts his praises sing. Our dominions bow before him and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent. Every voice in concert ring evermore and evermore. Christ to thee with God the Father and O Holy Ghost to thee. Him and chant and high thanksgiving and unwearied praises be honor, glory, and dominion and eternal victory evermore and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you've graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Since now in the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singles of heart. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the Son, Jesus Christ, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.